I've been using Blender for about 11 years now and in this time I made a lot of mistakes, but also learned a bunch of valuable lessons and tips that improved my projects and got me to work on big movies and TV shows. So in this video I'm going to share 5 of these tips to help you achieve your own goals and get better in Blender. Tip number 1. Embrace imperfection. If you are aiming for realism in your scenes, maybe you want to recreate real life, maybe you want to add to real life or you simply want to create something that looks believable. Then understanding that real life is not perfect is crucial. This really became obvious to me when working in a VFX studio on stuff like House of the Dragon and Marvel's Ant-Man, where realism was key. There we worked with a lot of different 3D scans, be it scans of the sets or scans of real castles and environments. When seeing scans in 3D you can really notice how imperfect stuff really is. Instead of flat walls, perfect bevels and nice corners, you see uneven walls, changing bevels and weird corners. It was actually an extra step in our workflow to go in and make the model less perfect. So moving vertices around to make the edges not as straight, add unevenness to the walls, move stuff around to break up the perfect symmetry and much more. So when you are working on your next project, try to implement this technique and see how much better your model will look. Another area this applies to is compositing. Renders coming straight out of Blender have this CG look, often described as mathematical. That is why in compositing you often want to add all these imperfections on top you would usually have in real life when filming with a real camera. Like all kinds of camera and lens imperfections such as chromatic aberration, lens distortion, vignetting, bloom and glare, lens dirt and smudges. Also stuff like film grain, color bleeding and halation really help you then give it that filmic look. Simply giving your render a slight overall blur really helps with the realism. So in your next project, don't worry too much about making everything perfect. Quite the opposite, embrace it. Real life is imperfect. But you know what is perfect for you? Skillshare, the sponsor of this video. Skillshare is the largest online learning community for creatives. It's packed with thousands of classes taught by experts, so no matter your skill level, beginner or advanced, you will find something that fits your needs. You can explore topics like 3D modeling, animation, sculpting and freelancing. But Skillshare isn't just for 3D artists. There are also great classes on productivity, illustration and so much more. Personally, I've been trying to stay more focused during my workdays and Skillshare has been super helpful in that. I've now been taking a class by Ali Abdel and others on organizing your day for many weeks now. And it gave me some really practical tips to avoid distractions and get more done in a day. The good thing with Skillshare is that you don't just watch. You get to put what you learn into practice right away. And you can even share your projects with other members for feedback. So the first 500 people to click the link in my description will get a one month free trial of Skillshare. So why don't give it a try today? Tip number two. Use less PBR textures. This might sound a bit weird, so let me explain. PBR stands for physically based rendering and PBR texture sets are collections of textures that help 3D software like Blender realistically simulate how materials interact with light. These textures include albedo or color, roughness, normal, displacement and more. Each one provides specific surface details like how shiny, rough or bumpy an object appears, allowing for more realistic materials that look great in any lighting condition. So you might think, well this sounds awesome, why would you say I should use less of them? Well I don't mean you should simply try to avoid them. I mean you should know when to use them and when not to. PBR texture sets are often designed to be seamless, meaning you can tile them across your model multiple times without obvious repetition. But to achieve that, interesting surface details like dirt, leaking, damage and other stuff are being removed since seeing that same dark spot repeat would quickly reveal any repetition. So then you would need to add this stuff back yourself by layering in other PBR texture sets 
or painting in dirt, damage or leaking by hand. This is awesome for hero models that are the main attraction in your scene since it gives you a great artistic freedom, really making it look exactly how you want. But for anything else, this really is overkill and simply takes a lot of time to get right, often resulting in textures and surfaces looking boring and flat. So what I can recommend is to use so-called photo textures. These are basically just photos cropped to show only the texture. This means you have all the interesting stuff like leaking, dirt, damage and color variation already included. If you then slide around your UVs to part of the texture that fit, you can get some realistic results super quickly. You can use the same texture then as roughness and bump map by adjusting it with a color ramp. Being able to quickly switch out one single texture and get a completely different result each time really makes you feel powerful and creative. And helps you save a lot of time to then spend on your hero objects. Before continuing with the next tip, let me ask you a question. What is your overall goal with Blender? Do you want to work on big movies and TV shows? Do you maybe want to create your own games? Or do you want to become independent and self-employed by working as a freelancer? I'm serious, I'm really interested in what your goal is, so please let me know in the comments. My goal is to spend my days working on my own projects, be it single VFX or 3D shots or full short films. My goal is to do what I want and what I love and share this process with others. So if you want to help me achieve that goal, then consider supporting me on Patreon. There I share all kinds of different project files, assets and tutorials. Just recently I started working on my very first short film, sharing my workflow and progress on Patreon. Since this is my very first short film I'm doing, there is a lot to learn and figure out, so potential for many interesting videos. If you don't want to miss these and if you want to get access to the project files in the end, then consider supporting me on Patreon. Thank you. Tip number 3. Decreasing render time. There are many videos going over all the different settings to reduce render time. All these videos are definitely super helpful, but in my experience, long render time is often caused by just one thing, hidden in your complex scene. For example, a few years ago I made this Burning Jedi Temple scene for a YouTube video. My original plan was to create a full animation, but due to very long render time I ended up just doing a simple image. Many weeks later I revisited this scene and noticed that I had a plane with a video texture right in front of the camera adding some light smoke and movement to the scene. By simply deleting this I cut the render time to a fraction of what it was before. In other scenes I had way too much particles in the background really killing my performance or this one plane subdivided way too much. So my advice when your scene just takes super long to render is to organize your scene into different collections and then enable one after another and see which collection has the most impact on your render time. With that you can easily figure out what part of your scene uses all the resources and then you can find ways to optimize that. Often these are things that don't really add much to the overall image which means you can easily replace or even delete them. Tip number 4. Video textures. When working on big scenes, chances are they include stuff like fire, smoke, water, birds, sparks or other dynamic elements. And for a lot of people, simulating these is the only way they even consider. But in my experience, keeping your simulations to a minimum wherever you can is really going to help you keep your scene performant and your time investments to a minimum. Simulations just take time especially if you need to crank up the resolution to get some details in. Also, they can quickly look unrealistic and slow down your scene very much. That is why I try to avoid simulations wherever I can, especially for the background. For example, if I need to add rain to my scene, instead of simulating hundreds of thousands of particles, I instead load in a video texture of rain. If I need to add a ship wake to my scene, instead of spending hours or even days simulating a realistic wake, I simply project a video of a real wake onto the ocean. 
Of course, you are limited to what video textures you can find, but there are a lot of places online where you can find all kinds of cool stuff. So, just give it a try. Load in some rain cards and place them in your scene. You will be surprised how quickly you can add so much realism with video textures. Alternatively, you can also take the method in between, which is simulating it yourself, but then rendering it as an image sequence and put it on 2D cards in your scene. Especially if you need to really populate your scene with all kinds of simulation, this can really help you keep your scene nice and performant. Tip number 5. Optimize your scene. Working on laggy and slow scenes can quickly drain all the fun and motivation you have to work on your projects. It can simply keep you from completing them if you can't render your scenes. That is why optimizing your scenes and textures is really important. This became especially obvious to me when I upgraded from my old setup to a much more performant one. After only a few days I faced the same issues I had before running out of GPU memory, Blender becoming slow and long render times. In my experience, you will always reach the limits of your setup, no matter how good your gear is. So optimizing your scene is really the only fix. Especially if you are using third-party assets, which often come with 4K or even 8K texture sets, various materials and effects, you can quickly reach the limits of what Blender can handle. So how can you fix it? In my experience, there are often just two main reasons your performance tanks. Too many objects and polygons in your scene and too many high resolution textures. So start by organizing your outliner. Create a collection, name objects and get a good overview of what you have in your scene. Also delete stuff if you don't need them anymore. Then look through your objects, seeing if any have any high poly counts that are really unnecessary for how close you are seeing them. Also look at your textures and see if you really need 4K textures for your background assets. Even just converting them from PNG to JPEG can really speed up your scene. And to be honest, you probably can't even see the difference, especially for color textures. I can really recommend the add-on to optimize. This tool helps you find all the problem areas in your scene, showing you which objects have a high poly count compared to the rest of your scene and showing you a great overview over all of your textures in the scene and their size. It even lets you resize them straight out of Blender. But most times, simply common sense is enough. Stuff in the background don't need as much detail as stuff in the foreground. So, I hope these tips were helpful and again consider supporting me on Patreon to get access to a bunch of cool stuff and help me achieve my goal of creating the stuff I love. With that said, I hope to see you in the next video of mine. Have a great day. Bye.